Hi everyone, it's Dave Williams here and I'm going to share with you today a walkthrough of the Lightning Lab app for Sphero Spark on an iPad. It's a free app and you will be required to sign in uh, at the beginning. Uh, I've already done that. Uh, students will also need to sign in and create an account. Just be aware that uh, there is an age restriction of 13 years on uh, creating accounts so teachers may need to assist students with that. Uh, so here we can see the the home screen for the app and uh, the default is the uh, Sphero feed. So that's a combination of Twitter posts uh, or programs that people within the community have been uploading uh, of recent. So it's a good way to have a look through, connect with people on Twitter who are using uh, Sphero's, uh, follow them and uh, see their journey and how they're going with it, uh, ask questions or whatever it might be, uh, but it also lets you see the latest content uh, that people are uploading to the uh, Lightning Lab that you can download and adjust for your purpose. So um, that's the feed, uh, well worth uh, trawling through there for lesson ideas or even just um, seeing what other people are doing because uh, they're an amazing device and uh, people are coming up with very creative ways of using them so definitely check out the feed. Now across the top here we've got the 3D models so uh, in one of the lessons I've mentioned um, using this as a discussion piece with your uh, students and by moving the uh, slider across you'll be able to see all the internal components of the uh, Sphero and what goes into making it including all their components and parts. You can do the same with the uh, Ollie as well. Uh, across the top here you have your profile which is uh, obviously who you are and what you do and links to your email and Twitter and websites if you have those. Uh, you can also uh, manage your own classes through that. Uh, it will take you out to the Lightning Lab website though so it'll be outside this app. Uh, across the top has the settings and nothing real exciting there but down the page is the firmware update so you can use that to update your Sphero when the time comes. Alright so I'll just go back to the uh, home page and um, most of the work that you'll do uh, with the Spheros is uh, across the bottom and uh, you'll see a programs option um, so in here you have um, three choices within programs so you have my programs which are the programs that you have created and then assigned to your class uh, it's where you can um, create content you have the Sphero uh, programs so these are programs that they have created and suggested as um, good starting points so uh, these would be ones for you to have a look at and uh, get involved in and uh, assign to your students as uh, additional lessons. You then have the community uh, programs and ideas that people have been posting to the community forum and uh, each of those are available for you to like uh, and uh, download. So for example if we wanted to do Sphero uh, Pong uh, you can have a look, you can click on the uh, option here and make a copy of it uh, and you can click on the download the program and you will see exactly what goes involved as far as coding that particular Pong game. By pressing start, your Sphero will then execute that particular code. So uh, there's lots and lots of resources within the Lightning Lab app, which is fantastic. Uh, it's worth exploring all those. What we are going to look at today are the My Programs. And there are three choices uh, when it comes to that. So by pressing the green plus in the bottom right hand corner, you get three choices of how you want to program your Sphero or your Ollie or whatever it might be. Uh, so you have a drawing tool, so you can draw on screen. The uh, Sphero will then execute. You then have drop and drag blocks and then you have a text-based coding app where you actually need to physically type in the exact code that you want uh, the Sphero to execute. So that's for advanced users and Okay, what I wanted to show you today was the activities uh, section of Lightning Lab and you have uh, choices of uh, the workbook which is your own workspace. Uh, these are also uh, programs uh, that you have liked or downloaded from 
the community pages. Um, so I won't show you those again. Um, you've also got the assignments tab over here. So these are projects that you assign to students who are in your class. So at the moment I don't have any students, but I can replicate how that might look. So for example, if I go to the Spiro community and I want to share this text coding uh, program with them, I can have a look through here. Some of these have videos and uh, photos as well, so it's well worth uh, having a look at into those. So I'm going to press assign. Now I don't have any students in any of my groups at the moment, but if I did, I'll choose the Digitech Coach Class 1 uh, group and I can press assign but because I don't have any students in that group it won't let me push it but imagine you did that's how you could easily share that particular task the drive tool across the bottom um, allows you to remote control any one of these devices uh, which is pretty cool they're great fun um, so I'll just my sphere has gone to sleep so I'll just wake that up let's give it a bit of a tap Okay, now I'm connected, and I'll choose the Sphero. No. All right, there we go. All right, so um, on the left you have a remote control joystick. You have the aim tool so that you can direct the Sphero to where you need it to go. You have a fast and slow slider. You then also have a uh, choice of color. All right, so you can make the LEDs change color and you also have a, a intensity of brightness for the LEDs as well. Uh, what makes the color choices important is that if you have a, quite a few of these in a class and uh, you all go with the default blue, uh, you're going to find it hard to work out which sphere you're controlling. So uh, allowing students to change color of LED can also allow them to identify their Sphero in a, what can be a uh, hectic classroom. Okay, so what I'd like to explore a little bit further are the three types of programs in the Lightning Lab. Uh, so I'm going to start with the drawing tool and I'll just call it a test draw and hit create. Okay, so what we have here is the drawing program for the Lightning Lab for Sphero. And what makes this a really cool a uh, way to program is that you get a grid and the grid replica replicates a distance on the floor. So coming down to the color wheel here, you can choose whatever color you like and that will be the LEDs of your uh, Sphero. So say I want a green uh, LED, I can also choose the speed I'd like uh, that Sphero to move in. So I'll just go roughly about half. And now I can draw on the grid and the Sphero will travel in that direction for that distance uh, with the green LED at that speed that I set um, in the colour wheel before. Now if I want to change direction, all I need to do is uh, draw a different line or I can come down to the colour wheel and I can choose a different colour and it will change the LEDs, but I can also get the opportunity to change the speed of the sphere as well. So I'll make it a little bit faster. And just notice when I draw again now and continue the path, how much fatter the uh, line has become. Now that's representing the speed so that you can visually look at the uh, diagram and see, well, I'm going from green, which is slightly slower, to a faster blue. Now if I go to red, and bump that right up to its capacity and continue the drawing, you can see that that's wider again. So if I was to execute that code, the Sphero would replicate that pattern on the floor. Uh, so I'm just going to put the Sphero on, on the floor and I'm just going to aim it because I have a lot of space here and I'll just make sure it aims towards there. Now, uh, once I've done that, I'm going to execute the code by pressing start and the Sphero will head off and do those. Now, it's going to hit certain things in the room possibly, but you can also see the graph down the bottom and it's um, graphing how far that Sphero has travelled. So there's some great mass that could be held, uh, had with that particular um, piece of information. You can see it went um, several hundred centimetres. So 
now that that graph disappeared, you can go up to these three dots in the right hand corner and let's finish that code. Uh, you can go to the sensor data and you can see that it lasted for 15 seconds. You can see the time, you can see the um, distance it traveled. Uh, you can um, blow that up and have a look at a bit more information. You can look at the distance that it traveled. So you're looking at each of those blocks being roughly 100 centimeters, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there's lots of information you can get from that. Okay, so here we're going to investigate further the blocks uh, program type. So I'll just do a test here and create. So this is where you use drop and drag coding to get your Sphero to move or action or speak or whatever it might be. Uh, this is the, where that happens. So at the top you've got a command of on start program so everything uh, follows on from that. So choosing uh, different fields from down the bottom here um, students will get the options to drop and drag those uh, settings into the program up here. Now it's a matter of trial and error, it's all about practice, it's all about seeing what will these things do. So at the moment I'm just going to get to roll for two seconds at that particular speed. I'm going to choose the angle that I want it to head in. I'll choose zero degrees which is um, straight ahead. Um, you can then Look at adding things like setting the color, uh, what's it going to do after that. You can punch in the um, red, green or blue or you could um, select the color from the color wheel. You can also choose the intensity or randomize the color completely. Once you've got that you can look at all these different other options um, that are available for uh, the Sphero and they're a really fun device to program. So I'm just going to spin at Five degrees for four seconds. All right, so at the moment it's a pretty boring code. Uh, so it's going to roll uh, forward for two seconds uh, at an intensity of 91. It's then going to change green and it's going to spin at five degrees for four seconds. So uh, if I was to press start, uh, my Sphero would then execute that particular code. Uh, I would suggest you get your students to explore all these different options and um, see what. Uh, they come up with at the moment. It's just a matter of trial and error. It's a matter of exploring all the different options. It's about failing and trying again and trialing and trying again. All right. So um, the more tri trial and error that your students can do, uh, the better they're going to become at programming their Sphero and programming in general because uh, trial and error and failing are a huge part of testing your code. Okay, next we're going to have a look at using the text uh, program type. So I'll just call that a test as well and click create. And you can see all the different colors of the program types down the bottom to reflect the type of program. Now this is using oval programming language. Uh, I would suggest this is an advanced function when looking at programming the Spheros. It's most likely something that um, some of your students may never get to or if you're in a secondary school uh, this could be something that your advanced uh, students look at potentially. Okay the next one we're going to have a look at is the uh, text program type and we're just going to call it a test and have a look at uh, this. Now Spheros use a programming language called Oval and I would suggest it's probably something that some of your kids may never even get to. Uh, it is quite complex and it is taking their programming and their knowledge to a whole new level uh, but it is also something that's quite possible for them to be doing. So I'm not going to touch too much on it um, today. I think it's something that you can just be aware of and see that uh, it does exist within Lightning Lab. It is somewhat something that you can extend students with and um, that's what's great about the Spheros is that you've got uh, basic, you've got medium programming knowledge and you've got this advanced uh, function within it that um, makes it a really good device to have as far as coding in schools.